Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going over the current big drop that we are seeing to the downside right now on Bitcoin. We have the market ultra fearful, ultra scared. Oh, and it's a thing of beauty. It really is. I'm going to be going over why we are seeing this move to the downside, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, some areas of support and why you absolutely need to have that plan ready right now, because otherwise you will be losing a lot of money. So I hope that you are ready for this analysis and let's just get straight into it. No time to edit this video. I'm going to record it and upload it instantly because it's very time sensitive information. So with that said, uh, that's well, this first of all, we'll go over the, a few simple supports why we're bouncing. I okay, guess so we have this really, really nice trend line. You can see trend line touch one, trend line touch two, trend line touch three, four, five. And we hit it this morning for trend line touch six. So we've got a pretty nice support trend line. I suppose we can make this green for support. <laughs> uh, and also what else does we have as confluence here? Well, you know, a simple, this is obviously a different term time frame, and we're taking our fibs from our low of the last consolidation low to the high. You can see we're bouncing off around that CC region. Is it a surprise? I suppose the first time you touch these CCs, they generally offer bounces. That had a bounce of da -da 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 -da, nearly two and a half percent, just over if you include the top of that wick. So, you know, you saw a pretty nice bounce from the CC here. You saw a pretty nice bounce from the, the you know, this trend line. But you have to remember, the more times we test support, the weaker supports get. So, you know, if we continuously test this support, you could expect it drops down to your next level of support. But basically, until proven otherwise, that is your support. And that's obviously coming in at $53,300, more or less, that region. So $53,300, that's the reason why you're bouncing at the moment. That's your current CC trend line support. And it's good enough to expect a bounce. And, and a bounce is what you're getting right now. What you have to remember is, does this bounce end in another lower high for another lower low? Well, that's pretty easy to determine because all you literally need to do is watch this lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. If we come up for our lower high and make a new lower low, well, obviously the trend is continuing down. If we manage to make a high, higher low, higher high, and we take out our last high, well, now we've got a local trend change off of the low of the CC, off of the trend line. So that's what you'd be looking out for in terms of support. But what I want to bring your attention to is actually why we're moving down right now. Okay, there's a few different factors in here, in my opinion. There is a few different factors in here. Factor number one, which I feel could be the biggest, is we were actually consolidating yesterday for eight hours. Okay, so since we made the high there, we, we went sideways for eight hours, 20 minutes. And we were seeing millions of shorts open in this consolidation area. And in my opinion... This was crazy. We were seeing millions of shorts open and we're talking lots of shorts. But one has to think in terms of probabilities. And as we were consolidating here for over eight hours with the bullish divergences we were forming at the time, it was under my perspective that we will be going up again before we see any term of downsides. Why? Because everybody, well, I have to play you this clip, by the way. I have to play you this clip. This is a clip <laughs> from a Instagram live stream. I'll explain this towards the end of the video, but I want to play you this clip. This is the legend himself, Igor, the man, the myth, the legend, the absolute beast of a trader, Igor. This is a clip from the <laughs> Instagram live stream, man, that we done yesterday. Uh, let me just play you this really quick clip so you can hear what we were saying. Uh, we got still got lots of, uh, saw lots of shorts coming in. I think yeah. we, I think we'll at least take this high day. Yeah. Should at least get this high. And that, what what was uh, Coinbase though? Was it fifty eight as well, or didn't uh, Coinbase high? Oh, oh, Coinbase nearly hit that within within like two dollars. Right. That's the high at the moment. Fifty seven thousand eight hundred. So as you can see there, just from that quick clip, and I do recommend you go and watch that. <laughs> I do recommend you go watch that live stream. It's pretty entertaining. But nevertheless. <laughs> Basically, what we were saying at the time is it seems really, really, really likely that we're going to be taking this high. Why? Because we saw millions of shorts opening here. So what happens when we take this high? Well, you can see right here. We take the high. People enter their FOMO longs at the highs. The shorts close. So that's the beauty of it. You see eight hours of consolidation where there are millions and millions and millions of shorts opening. And in my opinion, as you literally heard, I was in a long, you know, I was in a long as well. 
And I was saying, I think it's very likely that we take this high. Why? Because now when we take the high, what happens? The people that were short in here, which we can literally see from the open interest, the people that were short in here, they all get stopped out of their shorts. And also you have a lot of longs open at the high. So that is then what you need. Instead of looking at this consolidation with bullish divergences, which is very unlikely to just fall down here, what you needed to do was take the high, which you done, and then you get everybody that was shorting, they closed their shorts, you got the FOMO longs then open again, and then you have the pressure to push you down. Okay, so that was, in my opinion, the biggest, biggest factor really, that you stopped out the shorts and you had a lot of trap longs at the high. Obviously, then you can start to look at more factors. And I feel that this next factor is pr uh, probably bigger again. And let me just load up the post for you a second. Um, it is going to be the CME gap. So let me try and find it. Oh, yeah, we had a we had a, some we had some fun yesterday. But here we go. This is the <laughs> this is the post I wanted to refer to the CME gap. OK, so we obviously opened with a gap to the upside. What does the CME like to do? They like to fill the gaps. So obviously that offers a potential trade if you want to trade of, of the CME gaps of, you know, this is obviously day trading, scope trading. This is not about swing trades, but the CME gaps obviously have a potential short there for the, for the CME gap. We opened with a gap to the upside. What do they like to do? They like to fill. So obviously that would add to selling pressure to bring you down. <laughs> Shout out to, to Toro, by the way. <laughs> my, my rave song, that is. That's my rave song. But anyway, where we're going with this, let's get back to the analysis. So that was, a, that in my opinion, was a, some of the factors which, added to the selling pressure you had trapped trapped longs which is not enough on its own you had people shorting prematurely so people trying to get massive it was crazy so many shorts opening here it was very 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 likely that we take the high we took the high and you come back down below you can see here really 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 simple in terms of your swing you know you get above the high lose it back test it okay and then you get your cme open that adds to the selling pressure as you have a CME gap. You feel you the gap is now filled. So the gap is now filled and you come down, well, as I showed you earlier in the video, to that trend line support. And then also obviously to that CC support. Surprise, surprise, you get, get a bounce off of this. So that's talking you through thus far, in my opinion, why it was unlikely these shorts were going to work. We, it was very, very, very likely that we were going to move up again, stop out those shorts before any sort of selling pressure comes in. You stop out the shorts, you get the CME open, added selling pressure, you come down and you basically took the lows into the CC onto that trend line. So, I mean, it's pretty technical. Yeah, it's pr pretty technical, I think. Um, so there, there, that's what I wanted to That's what I wanted to start with. And then, so what, what are we looking at right now? Well, there's, there's a few factors that I suppose we can look at. I mean, it's pretty crazy when you look at this now. So what happened at the very lows here? 152 million sales, 69 million sell orders coming in at, at, at the lows there. So, I mean, what what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen? Just what, what's happening here? Oh, I mean, it, it really is crazy. You come up to the very, very, very high, people FOMO buy into their longs. And then guess what happens? You come down to the lows and all the people that FOMO'd in at the highs then get you know, then they're all short in the low. Look at that, 30 million, 15 million. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. When you think about it, it's absolutely wonderful. Because if you have a plan, which I hope everybody does have, and you're prepared for these moves to the downside, well, there is just opportunities galore. Opportunities galore. Uh, I refer you to one post here from the Champions Group this morning. Everybody, just remember, we wanted this drop. We absolutely absolutely wanted to buy this drop so while the majority of the world right now are ultra fearful and scared this is where our eyes absolutely light up make a plan trade the plan this is a great start to the day so i'm just coming in here and making people aware this is this is what we wanted we wanted this drop uh obviously i'm referring to my champions live stream last night but we wanted to see a drop in price so it's like like i was literally saying in the live stream people that are buying up here are you know who buys for swing trades up here you know up at the very highs this is such a crazy place to drop so why did we why are we dropping like this this morning because people that are actually pretty good at trading realize this is an awful place to open along you've got to wait for your retracements you've got to be the patient trader that waits for the retracements because they come they they, 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 they come <laughs> we see one today so it's like have that patience 
while everybody is ultra fearful and selling those lows because guess what they're obsessed with the 28,000 bitcoin transfer they're obsessed with the um f2 pool they're obsessed with all these sort of bits of random bits of news that literally nobody cares about if you're actually good at trading you know nobody cares about a well transfer honestly nobody cares about this so the only people that care about it are the people that sign up for the telegram alerts and it's like wow this is such a waste of time and money uh it's absolutely unbelievable what happens because how can you trade off of that information eg you can't you, you, how is it going to give you an entry and a stop loss and a target it's not going to do that so the only way that you can actually trade this is with technical analysis it is by recognizing things such as your cc retracements well look at that you come into your cc you get a bounce are you surprised i hope not why are you seeing the retracements well you you had a cme gap you took the highs you had trap longs also just for the absolute simple fact which actually this is my number one reason why did you see this retracement today well because good traders know that it's a really bad time to buy up at those highs it's the weekend how often do we see these weekend pumps that end up in a total reversal on monday um very 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 often so it's just like for the simple fact alone that this was an awful place to buy, you have to come down to your areas of value. Well, you start to come down to your areas of value, and guess what? You hit your first one, you get a bounce. It's like, I don't know, I just truly feel like you have to, you just have to be aware of why the market's moving, why it moves. Why, when you were seeing lots of shorts open here, did we have to come up and take that high before the retrace? Okay, why when the market's really, really, really fearful and we're seeing hundreds and millions of shorts at the very low, why do then we bounce? Well, this is how the market moves. Okay, you got the, you got your market makers, they're hunting the liquidity and that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, when you have your, you know, when you have capital to move the market, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to take those highs, you need to take those lows. And the only people that can literally get wrecked right now are the over leveraged traders. Over leveraged traders will be wrecked. And the, and the traders with no plan, the traders that were th saying to me yesterday, this is never going to retrace. You know, the people that were, were laughing at me a few days ago for shorting Bitcoin, because guess what? N never short Bitcoin in a bull market. You know, it's just absolutely crazy what goes on in this market. And I truly do feel and I'm trying to say this in a really mean to be nice, I suppose, way possible because i truly do not want to see people get wrecked and wrecked and wrecked but the only way you can avoid yourself continuously getting absolutely wrecked in this market because bitcoin is designed to wreck the average trader it 100 will wreck the majority of people and the only way that you can avoid getting wrecked is by having a really sensible formulated plan okay so it's recognizing why were we going to you know why were we so confident that we take the high my price, obviously, during that <laughs> plugged a live stream uh, was obviously $58,200. So why was it really likely that we were going to come up here, stop out all those shorts before the shot? Why was it likely that we come up there on the foot before the CME open? Why was it likely that we come down to these lows and everybody gets ultra fearful? Well, guess what? Because the market loves to wreck the average trader. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't really feel I need to emphasize it anymore, but I just feel I'll ask you two rhetorical questions. If you're a swing trader, do you think it makes sense to buy on a weekend pump at above $58,000? What do you think? Do you think that's a sensible place to buy? Do you think this is a do you think in, in in any world that this is a good place to buy? And for my second rhetorical question, do do you think it's sensible to sell into the CC onto your trend line support taking the lows and your well, really simply do do you think that's a good time to sell? Or do you think it's a good time to sell when everybody's really fearful and to buy? No, sorry. To, do you think it's a good time to sell when everybody's really greedy up at the highs and really good time to buy while everybody's fearful at the lows? It's a rhetorical question for you. I hope, I hope you know the answer. Um, but yeah, so so in terms of technical analysis, this, this has been a bit of a... <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I, I just sometimes want to do a video and I make a video. So that's what I've done. I mean, do you think... Um, in terms of our resistances, then, well, we have this HVN coming in at 56,200. That would also come, come inside. I mean, just look at this. Look at the volume up at those highs. That's, that's a really, really, really... Um... Well, one, one could say that's a little bit bearish, to be honest. Um, but, um, I mean... What I, what I would say here is, okay, okay, so where do we have some resistance coming in then? Well, if we kind of look at our downtrend resistance line, so we need to change this back to red. So if we say that we have this resistance coming in here at about, that could bring you up to around $56,000. So suppose you have an intermediate resistance of around $56,000. 
Obviously, if we start to get past that, we can look towards our next resistance, which would obviously be our CC here, which comes in at around, 50, let's just say, 57,000. So we have 56 intermediate, 57 above that, $57,000, obviously. Um, those are our two resistances. Could this be of our low this morning? Mm, potentially. I, I, I want, yeah, potentially. But we need to, you know, where does the pro probabilities increase if we reclaim those two resistances, I, I feel. Um, and then obviously, if we, you know, if we get some sort of move that is a move up into resistance or rejection and we continue down, well, we can continue down with those resistance trend lines, see when we actually break the downtrend. And then generally what you'd want to see is some, you know, actually some sort of shift in momentum. So you need to see that, you know, start to see that momentum shifting. Um, you know, momentum at the moment is still very much to the downside. So, you know, you'd, you'd generally like to see that little bit of a shift in momentum, really. You know, if we start to move down again, I mean, I'd I'd love it. Don't get me wrong. I'd love I'd love us to uh, come up for a higher low because then you offer you know offers good shorts, comes back down for the lows, and you have to remember the majority of people in this market actually hate shorting, so it's really funny. But um, you know, if we start to break through this CC, then you're obviously going to be down looking down towards your bigger areas of support. Which I mean, from a, from just really simply looking at the chart, totally blind, you could see that you have a big. SR coming in at around $46,000. So obviously at around that $46,000, what you have some sort of form of resistance, support resistance, that comes in at around $46,000. I mean, this is the thing. If, if you think that these prices are never going to happen, I mean, what happens when they happen? You know, you have to be, you have to be, uh, you know, you just have to be prepared for these sort of scenarios. I, I really do feel, feel so. Um, yeah, so that, that that's kind of the way that I'm viewing the market. I mean, We've gone through in this video why you just need to block out thinking about well transfers, anything like this. It's just a total waste of time. It really is. And I try and say this in the nicest way. It just is a total. And I mean, why do you want to waste your time? Yeah, I mean, hopefully you don't. Hopefully you do want to use your time efficiently. And you're not going to do that by following well transfers. Um, so anyway, or F2 pool or any, any sort of this rubbish. I mean, we had a technical reason for the highs. We had the CME gap, which also adds to the selling pressure. We come down to the CC, the trend line support will take it to lows. Uh, this is enough for a bounce. Does this bounce in the end in a higher low and we come down again for a lower low? Absolutely, that's possible. How could we say that starts to change? Well, if we actually start to reclaim that resistance of support, maybe see our open interest increasing, maybe it's actually seeing the momentum start to switch. Well, that obviously increases our pri higher probabilities, you know, until proven otherwise. Yeah, we could say that this can come down for another lower low. And obviously, if that's the case, we could start to look when our trend line breaks. And I mean, I don't really want to give the exact levels that I'm personally trading off of in this video. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't, don't really want to do that. But I, all I would say is for, for a simple, you know, for a simple fact, you could kind of just, you know, for a little bit of help. I would say you could look for when that downtrend resistance breaks. Maybe you're going to come and form some sort of rounded bottom. Look at your divergences. Okay. Look at when your open interest starts to increase. You know, these are the sort of things that you can be looking at. Uh, that's the way that I would approach this anyway, to be very simple. I mean, if you want to know the exact levels that I'm going to buy, well, that's what I went through yesterday in the Champions live stream. I have explained where I want to enter, where I'm going to have my stop loss and where I'm going to target. So if you want to know where I'm looking for, that's in the Champions live stream. Um, so that's what my plan and trading plan is. I just don't really want to share it in this video because it's unfair to the people that have paid for it. And yeah, to, to give you a final summary then of Bitcoin. Okay, so give you a final summary of Bitcoin to, to help everybody that watches the video. First thing I'll say is make sure you watch the live stream on Instagram from yesterday. A shout out to the legend himself, Igor. I'm going to have to mute this because we were, we were banging out for tunes as well. <laughs> I'll try and get a picture of us both. There we are. There is, there's me, there's Igor. Go watch that live stream if you haven't already. That's just the video here on, on Instagram. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, back to this. In terms of technical analysis, and I'll leave the I'll leave this in the description down below if you want to go watch that. Uh, we'll probably do some more random Instagram live streams bringing on some people. But in terms of really key resistance levels that you can like base, you know, start to formulate your own plan here. Well, I've given you, well, I've basically given you, but this is a summary, isn't it? So we have 56,000 resistance, 57,000 resistance. That was based off of the CC and that was based off of your trend line. If we are unable to break those resistances, or even if we break them with swing failure patterns and we continue this downtrend, well, really simply, the way that you could try to be basing, you know, where is the level to buy? Um, I mean, the way that I would kind of do it is, is I would be looking at my volume statistics 
and also just trying to work out like where are these highest levels of support so i mean how can you be doing that well you obviously can get in some my you know you can start to get in some minor levels of play for example uh here we could be looking at something along these sort of lines if we pull a channel that looks like this so you can see this channel would be coming in at around uh, you know, fifty-two thousand um, dollars. You know, if we start to break down from there, then you're going to be, you know, I, I've, you know, forty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> you might think, you might honestly, I know that people are going to feel forty-six thousand dollars. That's crazy. It's never going to hit. But the thing is, it, it could hit. So you got to be prepared for it. And and forty-six thousand dollars, obviously, is is a is a is a big support. So you know, it's just like your horizontal level of support resistance. So I mean, you could answer the question of is forty-six thousand the most likely as we speak right now? Obviously not. Why is it not? Because we still have the trend line support, we still have the CC support. But if you start to lose that CC support, then you start to lose your channel support, you start to lose 50k. Well, can you not see how then like this becomes more and more probable that we're hitting $46,000? You know, you just have to be prepared for that. And you have to be prepared for a move to the upside here. And if you know, if you're in the situation where you're just entering every day and you're just like writing, should I long, should I short? What should I do here? Tell me. You know, you can just see how you're never going to make money because you actually have to have that plan formulated. You have to be ready for these moves down. I mean, altcoins today getting absolutely wrecked. Absolutely, Altcoins are just absolutely destroyed. And this is why I feel focus on Bitcoin. You know, if you're able to make money on the moves down on Bitcoin, you know, you can just forget about your alts. But anyway, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Bit of a different video than normal. I, I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let, let me ask this one question before I end. Would you prefer... Please give me some feedback in the comments below. We'll give a like or a dislike to the video. I suppose we can look by that. Do you enjoy me talking through? I know I haven't really focused on the technical analysis. I'll probably label this a technical analysis video because I've gone through some levels. But it's kind of being focused away from the technical analysis. Just my thought processes, I suppose. Do you enjoy me talking talking to you like this? Or do you just prefer me to come onto the charts and say, this is the resistance, this is support. And that's it. Okay, let me know, because if people if people don't really care, like these sort of videos where I just r ramble on almost about trading, I uh, you know I'm just going to stop doing it. So it's fine by me. I'm um, you know it's fine by me. So let me know in a comment down below if you've enjoyed this video or if you've absolutely hated it and you think I'm one of the worst people in the world, <laughs> which I know many people think. So uh, let me know in a comment down below what you think of me, what you think of these videos. If you've enjoyed this style of video, I'll continue to do some more. If you've absolutely hated this style of video and you only want to know the technicals, you only want to know the current trades that I'm in right now, let me know in the comments down below and I'll, um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll read them. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed. I will upload this onto YouTube. Oh, yes, I will say that because I'm not going to edit this video. No financial advice during the whole of this video. No financial advice at all. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. I am definitely not going to do that. This is just my opinion for an educational entertainment video only. La la la. You have to understand that. Big legal disclaimer. Okay. And maybe I'll do another Instagram live stream. <laughs> so go follow if you haven't already on that. So cheers, everybody. Thank you. Have a brilliant day and goodbye. Cheers.